<clears throat> Talks about it with Fran Jazz. Featuring Hector the Connector. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for being here, That was bro. a good intro. I like that, actually. Good, good. Come on, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just... That's bad. Back in the bottle. That's Get funny. Get comfortable, man. Get comfortable. We're chilling you now, got man. Comfortable. We're chilling you now. Put this over here. All right. We're here. We're here. We're lit. We're live. This is the time. How you doing today? I'm doing great, man. I can't Good. complain. I'm enjoying the space. Good Perfect. vibes. Perfect. I'm, I'm yeah. glad, man. I try to make it comfortable for myself and my guests. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Perfect. Perfect. It's nice and cool. It was hot outside today. Yeah, man. I just shut the AC off when uh, when we're filming. Good, good. So it's nice and no cool already. Noise. Yeah, all that. We're good to go. Let's jump right into the juicy stuff. Let's go. The case. Let's dive in. Boom, Tell boom, us about boom. it. Get this. Got it. Perfect. Mic check. Mic check. Let's do it. <laughs> um. Yeah, man. I'm so glad, man. That's finally over. <laughs> Uh, I'm so glad it's over. What is it? What happened? I don't I don't know anything about it. Eight months. So eight months I was like trying to prove my innocence and like clear my name from any wrongdoing. Um November twenty second, uh I got arrested at Yonker City Council meeting. Um the, the, it was it was regarding like term limits. Um, I had just gotten an uh, uh, I'm sorry a rotator cuff surgery a week prior, and I went to this meeting because I had like cabin fever. You know I was home, and I went to this meeting. I got arrested. I got punched in the face by a cop, and then um, then it was like an eight month battle. Every Yonkers judge recused themselves. The district attorney recused herself. So I was in White Plains with the Orange County district attorney. Um, it was insane. What did you do to provoke a cop to punch you in the face? Well, nothing. And the, <laughs> White, the White Plains judge just <laughs> declared that not guilty, you know. Um, but in reality, what happened? Well, they, they 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 said well originally the charges were um, disturbing governmental meeting, disturbing like a government meeting while in progress, uh, disorderly conduct, um, resisting arrest, assaulting a police officer, um, and that that was like the original charges. And then uh, by the end of it, they were charging me with harassment and disorderly conduct. Um, Why did you do all that? Right. You know, in a sling. Let's not forget that. I was in a sling, you know. Um, and so. So, so that, that's, that's the, the paperwork version. What really happened? Um, so what happened was, and this is. Well, actually, I, let, let's start from the jump. What was the event? It was a it, so it was the city council's um, term limit meeting, right? And well, what so, is that? so term limit is, um, which I mean, I personally think all politicians should have a term limit. I'm running for four years, eight years, six years. After this, I'm done. Yeah. Um. So it was a meeting. It was for a what? meeting regarding that they were going to approve or disapprove on Mayor Mike Spano being able to run another term. So he. Well, what is the maximum in Yonkers? Well, it was eight, two four year terms. Mayor Spano's on his 12th term. And <laughs> this November, everybody will be voting him in for the 16th, for 16 years. So he just did 12. Wait, but if the rules are eight. So what they do is they keep changing it, amending it, oh. you know, things like that. And so that's what one of the, the meetings I was in. That's what they were discussing, right? Um, and the the meeting was, I mean, there were more people there opposed to it. There were a lot of uh, city people there um, who were t told by their supervisors to be there, like their department heads. So it was like the only people 
who were not in opposition worked for the city. You know, okay, if yeah. if you were if you was for it, you worked for the city. Nine out of ten people there worked for the city Makes in sense. support of it. Um, I honestly, I had spoken to all the council that week, um, except. Tasha, I believe Breen and Morante. Everyone else I had spoken to that week. I knew where they were, what their vote was gonna be. Um th- we had dialogue, you know, how I felt, how I literally just went to the meeting to get out my house. I was <laughs> and you know, that's another thing I gotta deal with for the rest of my life. My wife telling me I told you so, you know. Because she told me not to go to the meeting. And I'm like, ah, it's City Hall. Come on. And then she gets a call that I'm locked up. (laughs) Insane. But so um, so so that was the meeting. So what really happened, though? So the meeting was, um, you know, people were expressing that you're able to, you're you're allowed. It's constitutionally protected activity to uh, speak out at a meeting. Um, you know, to express your, your 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 freedom of speech, right? Respectfully, you're able to do that. Um, what happened that night, I think, was mostly the Tasha Diaz, right? She incited the the the, the energy in that room. Um, <laughs> I'm big on the 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 speaker controls the room. You know, if I come into a room and I'm like soft spoken, and you know, the the lower you talk, the louder they listen, right? She was like calling people in the audience beggars. This is our councilwoman. She was like calling them beggars and she's like going in. So the audience was like, oh, my God, who are you calling beggars? And, you know, there was just this big thing back and forth with the with her and the audience. And it put all the cops, I guess, in arms and they were super tense on top of that they were all unidentified officers nobody you know there was no blue suits everybody were undercover um half the people that were in the room i didn't even know they were officers you know i started a program i have a lot of respect for yonkers officers if it was a blue suit i probably would have hugged them and said all right yeah what's up you wanted to talk let's go outside you know um but yeah they were all undercover cops in the room you know and so just the climate was like it was it was it was super tense because of what was going on over there, you know. Um, what really escalated it and made it even worse was the actions of the police that night. You know, they took it to a whole nother level. I was in a sling, you know, and so I, in the matter of seconds, I had like six, seven officers like pulling me, trying to pull me out. Um, a community member had like intervened between me and the police and he was telling the cops like hey relax i got him i didn't even know he was a, uh who he was until i you know the next day that i saw it on video um but yeah it was um you know they 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 made it so much worse than what it was you know none of them identified themselves it, it, they none of them were visibly wearing a shield you know and then i get punched in the face in the hallway because the whole time i'm trying to like Tell people, stop touching me. Who's, you know, and I guess in that I, you know, pushed the cop's hand, you know, stop touching me. And he close hand punched me right in the face and then he grabbed me by my throat. He had to get pulled off me and then I get slammed. And uh, this whole whole thing on camera. Thank God. (laughs) If this thing was, can you imagine someone, somebody from our community trying to tell this story? If it was not on camera, I would have been screwed. It would have been thrown out, uh, thrown under the rug. It, oh, a hundred percent. They would have charged me with like assault. They would have charged me with all these crazy yeah. charges. And it sounds like no big deal. One million percent. But, but what did you do to provoke this? No, I, n- <laughs> yo, hundred percent. You weren't just standing it, there. No, no. So, so what they what they accuse me. Of, what that's the thing. No, nah, besides it, no, all brother, that. No, I'm the case is you, closed. No, the case is closed, but I'm so still suing open the city. Up. No, open I'm up. still suing, right? But <laughs> and so I don't want to. No, I I don't want to go into too much details, like because my attorney had told me to, like you know. All right. But let's change the topic. No, no, we can. You know, <laughs> <laughs> yo, I love it. Yeah, next topic, right? Next topic. Let's not even go into too many details with that. But running for political office, what we got going on? Oh my on? god! What, what, this is, what topic. is the what is the position? Uh, can we go back to the last topic? This yeah, is, if you want to open uh, up, 
Uh, well, running for political office, man. Yeah, well, what, what is the position you're running for? Uh, Yonker City Council. What, what, what is that position? Third for? District. Third District, Yonker City Council. Um, what, what does that position do? Um, so, basically, a council person writes legislations that benefit our community. Um, where some, where you can consider a council person uh, like the advocate between your district and the and city hall, right? When you speak and push legislation and you advocate for things, it's for people in that district. You know, which is the third? District? The third district. Well, the Yonkers was redistrict. Earlier this year, it happens every ten years, I believe. I'm sorry, right after census, like, um, and so the third district now, uh, you have South Broadway from Ludlow, uh, some of Jackson and Highland, Harriet, um, Main Street, Elm, Linden, you know the Nodine Hill area, Yonkers Ave from like 220 Yonkers Ave to about the Gatos up there. Um, Slow Bombs, Whitney Young, School Street. Um, Poverty. Yeah. They put all the, like, all the, all the low-income housing is in that, is mostly in the third district now. And, um, so, me. so council. And it's, it's, it's a weird balance, you know, because so, then so we have a lot of. what? And so I would be writing legislation to help in that area, um, one of the things right now, I think that, I mean, it's super cliche, but I'll be supporting like the affordable housing, right? I think we need more affordable housing. Um, not only affordable housing, I think there needs to be more home ownership. A lot of people our age in particular, um, like we ready to buy, you know, we want to get a condo or a house or something, you know? Um, so just our generation really having those opportunities. Um, and and also like the building department, you know, making sure that uh, Yonkers businesses, um, you know, we're, we're, we're focusing on bringing so many new people into Yonkers. And I just always ask, where are they going to shop? No one likes to go to Getty Square, you know, South Broadway, you know, you're from Yonkers. You do not think of Getty Square immediately to go shopping. It depends for what? Right. I mean, I agree. In, in this day and age? <clears throat> I would go there for a bank. I would go there for the fish market. I would go there for a jewelry store. Um, there's a Hallmark. The library's not there no more. The library was a good deal. It's not there no more. Yeah, even That's about though, it. That's about it. Right. And I, and, I'm going to get so, yarn. I'm going to go to C.H. Martin. <laughs> there's certain things I go to, I go to Getty Martin. Square for. But it's not many things. Yeah, it's not yeah. many things. You're right. It's yeah. not many things. But there's there's certain things that right. It, and throughout it, South Broadway and Yonkers, I think yeah, that there's same not thing. enough there's, mom and pop shops. You know, and that's because I feel like everything's mom and pop if you think about it. Besides, like the banks and the like insurance agencies. Besides right, right, that, right. No, but mom the up and coming ones. Yeah. There's not much up and coming. Like it's the older ones that thank God, you know, yeah, yeah, that yeah, they're yeah, here, definitely. but they're limited. Um, also, one thing is that is insane is like if you stand in Getty Square, right? There's about 30 pharmacies, 20-something pharmacies, like in one mile radius, you know, from Getty Square. On Main Street, there's about six pharmacies. Um, then you have some on New Main. And so, like, I would like to see more fruit stands than pharmacies, you know. Um, and these are things as a council that I can help advocate for. Um, and I, I also, I think that... It, what I'm seeing, like, I knock on people's door, and I've heard so many stories that are, like, completely heartbreaking. So you have this family who did the right thing, invested in a business, found a location, bought everything they need to, you know, fully stock this location, like, for a restaurant. Let me give you an example. Some guy, he wanted to open up a restaurant. This was their family dream. Um... They put all their money into this location, bought commercial appliances, everything brand new, and then waited almost a year and a half for permits. While they're waiting for Yonkers to approve even them to open, he still had to pay rent in this place, you know? And so here he has this location fully stocked, ready to open, you know, putting all their money into this business. And um, 
and him not even be able to open because he went bankrupt. He 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 ran out of money. But, to, do, but to, do you know the specific situation? So, so what, what happens is Yonkers what was holding it up. Yeah, I, you you know, at first I used to go hard at Yonkers City Hall, like that at, at the building department. Like, what the hell's going on? You guys are doing this deliberately, but honestly, I just think that um, they need more help. Young, the, you know, they need they need uh, better systems. They need more help in the office physically like the people that are there uh need assistance you know um there's files piled on their desk you know and they can try their best to get through everything but like again we are like pushing for more residents to come to yonkers and a lot of these residents are entrepreneurs right and they're looking to try to navigate their new businesses in yonkers um and it's just like it's so hard to do that here, you know. And so you so going back to the to the gentleman that I was using as an example, um, he had to give up his space, right? And to kind of keep it balanced with the landlord, he told the landlord to keep everything in there. So the merchandise in there was what paid the rent back rent that he owed because he was never able to, you know. And so then the landlord goes and rents the location out for even more money because now it's stocked and ready. You know, so the landlord came up on this already stocked location. This guy goes back to square once after he just lost all his savings, you know. And um, it's just they, the, the Yonkers building department. It's so hard what happens mm -hmm. with businesses. I hear this over and over and over. I go to businesses all the time. You know, and um, some of them to get their le to their business to the next step, uh, they have to put a hood, you know, for for cooking and stuff. That process alone can take almost a year, eight months, and for a small business, you know, um, having to pay the permit over and over. Blueprints. That's another thing. You know, instead of you, I bring the blueprints, and you say, "Hey, A, B, and C, don't look right." Um, they won't. They'll just say, "Hey." A doesn't look right. Then you go, you pay $275 for a blueprint, you know, after they fix A and come back. They're like, oh, great job in A, but fix B. And so as a business owner, I have to go and get the blueprint redone every time they send me back. I end up paying almost $1,000 on just blueprints. And then you have another few hundred dollars on sign permits. And I mean, the whole process and starting a business like you need to have bank patience and a connection to the city because if not oh my god Dios te bendiga. yeah i definitely understand that it's hard yeah yeah it's really hard and so you know working uh, you, you with have the, to, you have to be everything has to align perfectly yeah yeah you know and we don't have to reinvent the wheel just bring the wheel to where there aren't any you know what i mean and so like I feel that if you look at another city of our size, uh, they have up to like 10 to 12 city inspectors to go inspect businesses and properties, you know. We have like four. We have five, I think, you know. If I'm not mistaken, I think somebody retired, but... And so, it's like so the the position you're going for. I'll be able to help you know with a lot of things like this. Like I would what? like to see more transparency. Also, what what would you be able to help with in the building department? So in the building department, me in particular, I would like to do an audit. Right. This sounds like a bad word to a lot of people in office. Audit, right? But I think that it's important to audit all these departments, departments, um, in order to see where we can tweak. Right. Because a lot of the stuff is just speculation. It's stuff that, you know, we have to go through FOIA reports or somebody inside says or, you know, or for me, it's like the consistencies in seeing businesses um, go through the same process over and over all throughout Yonkers. Like not even just my district. Like this is all over Yonkers. People are like you talk about opening business outside of Yonkers and people in the Bronx are like, no, run, you know, because it's it's insane, you know. And so at first I thought it was the building department, but I see they just can't handle the magnitude of, you know, they need help. They need better software. I would want to get them a bigger budget. You know, I would want to get more people hired in their office to help them out 
to get around, you know. You have like uh Rima, right? That's one of the women that work at the part uh, at the uh, office. And I mean, some people have a hard time with her. I think she's just by the books. You know, she's pretty awesome. She's just by the books. She don't like to waste your time. She don't want you to waste her time, you know, but I get it because not only is she taking care of people in the window, she also has to like then jump in the car and go inspect the property. You know, and it's like it could be overwhelming, even though she's an amazing person. You know, we she get it's just overwhelming the amount of task and duties that we, you know, we're going to we ask of them. And especially in knowing that this is a growing city, you know, Yonkers is from when we grew up. Yonkers has grown in, in population, maybe 40, 60,000. Yeah, definitely. So. Let's talk about campaigning. No, oh my God. What well, what is your uh, campaign looking like? Um, so right now, I think that like the whole um, the whole arrest, it made the beginning of my campaign really hard. Uh, simply because a lot of the people in office or um, you know, the people opposing my run use that as the narrative to share. Um, and so when I went to knock on doors or I went to speak at certain rooms, uh, people were like, hey, but aren't you the guy that got arrested at City Hall? You know, uh, oh, we heard that you assaulted a cop or we heard that you did this, you know. And um, it, they were just like defaming me and, you know, using that to completely blow me off but once people got to know me and knew what's up and now thankfully you know i was found not guilty of none of those um in fact i didn't do nothing illegal i wasn't going to be charged with anything they just charged me with all of that to like cover the cop's ass for hitting me um you know so now people are like oh wow you know you you held off anybody from our community probably would have like copped out you know um but running the campaign has not been easy. It was really hard going through that process. The, the, me being arrested made it a lot harder. I think that people already, I've been serving my community for years. So it's not that far fetched, you know? And I heard they already come, to, they call me mayor, you know? So, um, but yeah, it, it, it's been, it's been interesting. It's been weird. Cause I'm Hector the Connector. I like to mess with. I, I like to, bro. I'm <laughs> Hector. Man. Yo, I'm Hector the Connector. You know, I. Talk I'm not, about that name. Yo, I bro, got that name. Yeah, bro. I'm like, I'm for people, not politics. You know what I'm saying? And so I came from a community. I was in a gang when I was in a teenage. When I was a teenager, right? And so the, some of my mentors were like, "Yo, put that color down. Step away from colors." You know, got me more involved. I, I became an activist, right? And then once I became an activist, they're like, well, pick red or blue, Republican or Democrat. You know, like now I got to pick colors again. And it's really weird because a lot of the the, the work in our community um, don't have color, you know. Um, I mean, politically, like mental health, this affects everybody, you know. Uh, the, the lack of opportunities in black and brown communities is happening in Republican and Democratic states. You know, and so, I mean, we're more, of course. Right. But I think that, you know, um, and now, you know, becoming a Democrat is like trendy. Right. And so you have a lot of <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. I got involved in politics. It's so weird. Like a lot of the Democrats used to be Republicans who were like, you know what? I have a change of heart, you know, or a lot of re Republicans. I know a bunch of people who like ran as a Democrat. And then was like, oh, you know what? Democrats ain't nothing, you know, and became Republicans. And it's just it's I'm not for politics. I'm for people, you know, um, and I think that our community is just so disconnected from politics. We don't know that every day our life is politics every day, you know, and so how our community don't know that you can call the council person for anything. You know, if there's lights, if there's a street light off in your neighborhood, you know, 
Call your council person and complain about it. You know, if you're looking for resources, call your council person. You also have constituent service, Yonkers constituent service, um, and they'll help you, you know, with what department you should talk to depending on the issue. Um, but nine out of ten, call your council person. Unfortunately, the council I'm running for, um, it's really hard to get in touch with her. You know, but it's gonna be it's hard. unfortunate, it's man. It's gonna be hard to get in touch with you, also. No, no, I'll be the only council person that has like a a, a literal open door policy. Like, I I want to set up a, a day a month and um just be in my office all day and say, hey, look, this day of the month, I'm gonna be in my office. Come to City Hall. This is your house. You know, the first time I walked in City Hall, I was like 26. You know, um. And, and and it's insane, you know. There's people right now, 30, 40 years old, never walked into City Hall. But which one is City Hall? Bruh. You see? I've been in a bunch of those buildings. Uh, I don't know which so is City Hall's like right, you know is where Popeye's is? It's across from the courthouse. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's our City Hall, is right? Coming the, from our community. Where the, where, the DM, where, the, where the parking violations area is? Yes. All right. In front of the park of violations. All right, yes, perfect. Yeah, yeah, that's also, I've never been up there. I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been in the courthouse in the park. <laughs> yeah, so you know, and so that's the disconnect in our community, you know? That I know right how to there. pay fines and see judges. <laughs> that's it. You know, that's what our community knows how to do, and it's unfortunate. That's you all know? we're taught. Yeah, man. Only once something bad happens. Oh, you know where to go? No, where? Like, I'll flip it over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and so, and so that's really like the stigma I'm trying to break. You know, I think that, um, you know, more of our community just has to get involved. But what are people gonna do? Right. I understand reporting like lights out and stuff like that, but what else? There's so many things you can call your council. If you have problems like renters issues, right? Our community, we have a lot of slumlords. Of course. Right? And so if you're dealing with a landlord that, you know, is not um, adhering to your needs, then, you know, call your council person. I have, you know, I I dealt with a a landlord that was like insane. Like she tried to... um, she tried to, I, I called the city on her because she wasn't fixing anything. I called the city. She got in trouble and then tried to evict me, like, in retaliation, right? And so, you know, it was a long court battle, but I ended up winning, thank God, you know. But that's because I knew who to call and how to go through the process, you know. Um, and so, yeah, just, like, really, you know, opening up that 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 for the community, you know, bringing, I already do this for the community. That's the thing. You know, I'm Hector the Connector. I'm a human rights commissioner. I sit on the climate task force. Uh, I, uh, I'm i also on like a parent council at St. Peter's. I sit on like seven, six boards throughout the city. Um, I It's just literally continuing that work of tying people together, cross sectors and intergenerationally. You know, there's literally no transparency in Yonkers. If if something so remember that important topic we were talking about term limits, right? Yep. You would assume that something like that, they would market to the community for weeks in advance. You know, like, hey, guys, you know, the mayor's a, he's been mayor for eight years already. Twelve. I'm sorry. The first time was eight. We let him do another four. He's at 12 now. He wants to do 16. This is something you would want to let the vast majority know. From the time it was proposed and voted on, a week and a half. A week and a half, you know? And so it was just... By, so us activists that were at City Hall trying to represent like my, my friends, you know, like I, every time I tell my friend that Mike Spano was like mayor for 12 years, that he's about to be it for 16, they're like, wait, what? Why? I don't what, what that's just that's not that's not cool right and so it takes time for activists to get the word out you know um so there's just such a huge disconnect from city hall and the community that um that's something I definitely want to try to help like you know beef up the communication get more people's the input be on the ground be accessible you know that's really it being accessible 
on top of writing proper legislations that'll benefit us in you know the lower income you know i'll also be able to advocate alongside some of my future colleagues in legislation where uh like the legislators to help with the beeline buses you know um i'll also be able to support affordable housing uh affordable living for i mean renters rights sorry i was trying to ignore my phone um and so you know there's just schools that was an, that's another thing you know i think that um we need to put more money in schools right now we put a lot of money into like non for profits around and then the non for profits go and run programming in the schools Right. And what we should do is just give the schools the money and let them bring in the programs that they need through those partnerships. Right. Because each school knows what program or how to cater to their kid individually in their school, you know. And so, um, yeah, the schools are like I mean, they bring a few dollars and they're proud of it, you know, but we need to really focus on the schools. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And what about uh, men's mental health? Mm. What do you got going on? Actually, uh, let's talk about you for a second. You talk about a lot about the community or whatever. How do you deal with your mental health? Mm. Good friends, man. I have really good, like, I have a really good group of men and women. Like, depending on how I feel, I can call. I think that um, knowing how you feel is super important. Knowing your body, understanding what are your tics and what throws you off, you know. Um, but I think like my friends are everything. I'm able to. T I have. I have guy friends that I'm able to go and be like, yo, ah, you know. And I have women friends that I'm able to call and do that, you know. Um, working out. I love meditating. I love guided meditation. So I'll throw off I'll, I'll YouTube like guided meditation video. Um, sometimes I got to go through them because the voices are, you know, um, I got to find a nice voice that I like. Definitely. You know? definitely. <laughs> if, if you want to get lost in it. Yeah. 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 I got to find the right voice for my day, yeah. you know, and then I just zone out. I go in the park. I you nice. know, do my thing. I like to write a lot, too. Nice. I get on my notes. Um, but that's what I personally do. It took me years to, like, find out what works for me. You know, I think that that's something. There's so many different things to do. It could be whatever, you know. But what works for you? Like, for me, that works. I like guided meditation. I like walking out. You know, I, I love to be outside, outside, <laughs> you know. And so that's so, what works so, for me. So what about uh, with the community? With the community, I think that... I would love to see more programs for men, you know, men in particular. Young, uh, the men and the young boys in our community are. It's there's a huge disconnect. There's a huge problem, and I've tried raising the alarm um, with congressmen, um, with council, with legislators, with senators, with community organizations. I mean, you name it. Um, you know, I, I don't want to go down and name all the people that I've spoken to because I don't want to shout them out. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I have spoken to people all throughout Yonkers about the lack of programming, you know, targeting men in particular. Um, because, you know, I, I, these young boys, first of all, are dying. You know, we have a lot of kids um going through violence in the community a lot of it stems from like facebook or you know social media stuff or like really just not knowing how to handle their emotions in the community sometimes and so um or jumping in gangs you know i think that a lot of the times people become part of become a gang member for protection for um brotherhood you know um to really have a bonding you know friends and family type of experience but one thing i realized that a lot of the things uh, a lot of the things that attract people to gangs is what would attract someone to like a football team or a baseball team like that bond that brotherhood that comes with being part of a sports like sportsmanship you know um and i think that that's why since there's a lack of programs in yonkers they tend to go to gangs more 
you know. And so we really need to get more sports and more real active hunts out where that they'll build that bond thing. Um, but right now, um, if you're, let's say you're a guy looking for help, right, in Yonkers, and you're like, you need a program. Um, there's my sister's place, Mary J. Blodge Center, Yonkers Executive um, Women's Advisory Board, Westchester Women's Advisory Board, um, where it's, which uh, my sister's place. There's about four or five places, um, right, that specialize in that. But they're all, like the name alone caters to women, right? So... Um, so that's already kind of discouraging for a man, right? Sometimes the guys, you, we have to kind of break through that machismo and everything. We're already trying to figure out, you know, we're going through this cultural battle of what we've been taught in as men growing up in the community we grew up in and then having kids or growing up in the community, becoming activists or, you know, just older men and realizing that we have like these conf conflicting ideologies, um, and so even myself, like when I went to these programs, I remember the the, the Westchester Office for Women had like uh, a domestic violence workshop, right? And I was like, oh, this is dope. Let me, you know, um, as someone who has been abused and someone who has abused, right? Because I grew up in like a really, ab I, w I got abused as a kid. Like my childhood was insane, right? And I almost passed that on for life. Right? And I'm glad I healed, but as somebody who went through that, I'm always looking for things to kind of make myself better. So I said, this Westchester office, Westchester's Women Advisor Office, I'm sorry, it's Westchester Women's Advisory, something like that. Um, they had this, this workshop, and I attended, and um, you know, the whole 45 minutes, every example they gave, the man was the abuser. Right, every example of abuse, even though they said it was genderless, she said, "Oh, let me give you an example." So this guy, but it made me feel this small, right? And I and so through therapy and everything, I realized, you know, share my feelings because sometimes through that you can. And so I I, I shared with them like this was super informative, but I was almost discouraged not to say anything. Because the examples given were of men abusing. There was no scenarios played around. And so she apologized and she was like, oh, you know what? Actually, you're right. I do have another example. She gave another example, you know, and, and it opened up more dialogue and stuff. But it really made me realize that we don't have enough of that, you know, men talking to other men like, this is my experience. What is your experience? How can we do this together? Like, you know. In our community, you talk about your feelings. They're like, pause. <laughs> but, but what can you do about that? So as an activist, right, I think that, um, you know, I think we should all be active on that. I think that as men and as friends, excuse me, as men, we should all talk to, you know, our boys, make sure they're going through. I've lost a lot of friends through suicide, like who committed suicide. Um, you know why? What was the main reason? Like so average? just depression, things they were going through. They felt like they couldn't talk to somebody. I remember I lost a friend um, and he, he tried to seek help. But what happened was it took him maybe a few months to realize he needed help. Then he went to get insurance. The insurance process took like another three months. He got the insurance. When he went to make an appointment with a therapist, it took three months, two and a half months. Because the, the, the therapist was just, I guess, overwhelmed or had too many cases or something. And so the, the appointments are just far out. And so he com he just committed suicide in waiting for his, you know, appointment. And um, and I think that that's why it's important for us to have groups to, to kind of help through the process. Because the system is backdated. The system's going to work the way the system was designed to work. Right. And so um, I'm big on we got us. Right. We have to take care. If we don't got if you make it, I make it. I'm going to put as much energy in making you successful as I would in myself because one of us got to pop, you know. And so 
um that's the same energy i want to i want to bring so as council i want to start a joint task force right uh, a co-governance task force i want to call it and i want to bring in like the, the head of the hospital i want to bring in the head of the police department i want to bring in the housing associations the business association education uh labor you know and bring and the task force may look like 15 20 people and it's collectively how do we all tackle this one area how do we all tackle this one problem you know, I learned this with like being on the the task force, the climate task force. We, you know, we're get we're talking about all the data, the heat strokes and stuff like that, right? But then we went to the hospital, and you know, I have a connection with the hospital, so I said, "Hey, look, this is what we're doing." They sent over all the data for the summer. You know, the hospitals are dealing with the people who are getting shot, the the mental health patients that are coming in. They have so much data. They should be on the front line with us. They should be getting the support, right? Um, and et cetera, et cetera. And so I think that, you know, a co-governance task force is going to be super important in this, especially this city is so diverse and it's growing you know, um, we need multiple perspectives on tackling specific projects. What is your advice on newly married couples? Mm. Speaking about men's mental health, men don't get to open up. Men don't, you know, even seek help. Right. And relationships and marriage is tough. Yeah. To a man or even just to both, you know, both couple. Both, yeah. Both parties in the couple. Any advice, newly married? The only advice I would have is that 50-50 um, doesn't always mean half. Talk about it. You know, 50-50 could mean that, you know, I may have it, you know, I may have 90% for six months, you know, but in the seventh month, I might need you to hold it down for, you know, whatever that looks like. It could be financially. It could be in the house. It could be, you know, some, like for, for instance, I love my partner. She knows me for her and I have been friends 23 years. She was like my first girlfriend. And then we lived in the projects. That's a love story. We lived in the projects in Mofort. And um, they tore down the projects, right? She moved, I moved, but we always maintain a great relationship, friendship. And here we are, you know, 27 years later, been together six solid years, my homegirl, my, my everything. But. I remember, they were, you know, we're big on communication, you know. Um, and so I remember there was a period, like, even, like, when that first happened to me or whatever, I just said, yo, I need love. Like, I just need, I don't need nothing. For, she used to tell me, baby, is there anything I could do for you? And I used to tell her, like, just, yo, I just need you to love me. I just need you to hug me. I don't know what to say. I don't even want to say certain things to you because I'm still figuring it out. You know, but I just need you to be there for me. I need you to love me. And just being able to say that, you know, sometimes it's hard as a guy to say that, you know. And, and, and so I've grown to be able to say that, like, hey, look, I I don't really need nothing. I just need you to love me right now. Let me figure this out, you know. Um, and and she's she's there, you know, no matter what I ask for, she's there. And vice versa, you know, because we're like a team, right? And so sometimes, same thing with her. I'm like, hey, honey, what's up? You okay? And she's like, I don't know. You know, I need five minutes. I'm like, <laughs> you know, but I think that that, you know, if it, it, if it is a new relationship, 50-50 doesn't always mean half. You know, I may have it today. You may have it tomorrow. You know, if if she does laundry, most of the times, go do laundry. You know, hold it down. If she does the dishes, go do dishes, you know. Definitely. Whatever that more of is, do it. Bounce it back and forth, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because with the kids, that's exactly it, too. Bounce it back and forth. That's you know? my next question. Advice to new parents, but specifically men and then, you know, in general. Also. Child support is expensive. Stay with your... Listen, y'all better work it out. Cheaper to keep her? <laughs> Cheaper to keep her. <laughs> uh, 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 a few episodes ago, <laughs> uh, my guest said it's... um, pretty, I forgot how he worded it, but it's the opposite. He said <laughs> it's it, it's uh, 
the light at the end of the tunnel pretty much is what he meant. I forgot how he worded it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once you get through all the bullshit, a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Peace is worth more. Oh my god. Always. But, but what sucks is back in the day. People stayed together. Yeah, yeah, for the kids. They weren't happy, but nope. they stuck it together. Right. But nowadays, no, people no. are easier to walk away. Right, right. Yeah. So I understand both sides. No, I get it. <laughs> right, right. You know? And that's like the whole 50-50 thing, right? <laughs> it's tough, man. But um, no, I think that like for new parents, I think, again, communication is everything, right? I think that... um. It don't matter if you're young, if you're old, you know, coming from a specific social economic status, we forget how to communicate sometimes with our part. You know what I tell people, my friends, actually, I tell them, don't turn your customer service skills off. Like when they're at work, we're all like this really we have patience. We listen more. We'll take a step back. You know, I tell people, do not turn that off with your partner. Because I I work, you'll let somebody get over because you don't want to get, you know, or you, you know what, let me go outside, take a second. Let me go take a break, right? Don't turn your customer service skills off. Do the same thing at home. If she, you know what, I'm going to need a second, you know, and, and I mean, in my house, my girl's the boss. I just think that works better, you know, for me at least. I let her, I let her organize everything and I just focus more on doing my community stuff and the fundamentals but she plans everything perfect that sounds like a great union you got there the she, yeah yeah she she's better at that but i we but tried I we went back and forth we tried to see i was garbage at it i, I agree <laughs> though the, the the communication is everything it's so yeah my a lot of my relationships like i realized a, a lot of the women i was with in my life um they had daddy issues you know we were trauma bonding you know, and so our community, like our youth, confuse like trauma bonding with like lust and affection and you know, f- love, and and so I think that you know, allowing our youth and showing our youth how to express themselves and how to talk, especially young men, you know, um, communication is everything. It's even if you're gonna separate from someone and you know, co-parent communication is everything it is so hard you know it's really hard you know as men sometimes we're supposed to like you know there's men in our community that give up on their kids after the co-parent because they can't effectively communicate you know and so i tell everybody listen fight for your kids and communicate yeah i i I preach communication in every relationship business relationship Mm. friendship yeah Say that romantic relationship without communication, you have nothing. If right. I don't know what you are thinking and you don't know what I'm thinking, we're, we're both blind and it's fucking pointless. We're not getting anywhere doing this. 100%. I like to describe myself as a delusional optimistic, you know, like who I am now. Like, that's who I aim to be now. I, lo- I love being a delusional optimistic. I love to say, like, you know what, there's always another way. You know of uh, uh of looking at this, and so um, that's just kind of where Hector the Connector is. He's just a delusion optimistic. Hector There's the a, Connector. Some way cross sector and cross generation. I just make the connection and it works. You know. Hector the Connector with the sector. Let's go. <laughs> Bars. <laughs> you have a, a dream vacation. Aren't you a producer? Right. I produce everything. Let's man. go. Music. Uh, this. I'm. I'm literally behind the scenes and in front of the scenes right now. Let's go. Shout out to him. <laughs> but um, dream vacation. Any any dream country or any hmm. uh, city? Any dream vacation. That's worldwide. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was uh, about galaxy to ask. Wide, galaxy Ooh, wide. No, no. I ain't Mars doing the galaxy is, right now. No, no. Mars like, is, 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 is pretty for, close. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I think the submarine experience was like. That's the opposite to, way. It's going deep. We got to go up. Yeah, yeah. But, Either but, way, I'm but, not yeah, messing yeah, with Yeah, yeah. Whichever way you want to go. It's too advanced for me. Um, I think my dream vacation would have to be. Jesus. Australia. Really? Yeah. What about it? I, I just love like the animal, the 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 food, the culture. Um, yeah, that's where 
me and my girl really want to go. And honestly, because of Finding Nemo. Perfect. You know, so <laughs> I'm going to go to 32 Wallaby Way, Sydney. Perfect. You know, but Australia would be like the dream vacation. All right, good. What What are your down life down. goals, overall life goals? My life goal is to um, protrude love. I want people to like, I want people to remember me and be like, Ugh, he just disgustingly loved everyone. You know, like he was just like, I think I lived so much years of hate and I, and you know, like growing up in a toxic environment, like from my, from parents and family and relationships. My, I spent so much time of my, you know, little years I've been here, um, and just negativity that I just want to disgustingly love, love, love. That's what brings me to, like, my delusional optimism. You know, I'm like, I have no beef with nobody. I just, even now, you know, like, it, I'm running for office and people are, oh, my God, you know, I don't want to talk to you because if we go against the incumbent, we might, you know. And I'm like, bro, it's all love. Yeah, I'm going to serve the community before. I'm going to serve the community after. As a council, whatever title I have, you know, I am a young Kenyan. Young <laughs> Kenyan. You heard? <laughs> young Kenyan. I yeah. never heard that. I like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm young Kenyan. So I just like, I am going to be out here doing my thing. Hector the Connector. Hector the Connector, yeah. the young Kenyan. Tell the people where to find you, man. Yo, you can find me on social media. It's Hector the Connector on social me on Instagram, um, Facebook, all that stuff. Or you can um, Google Hector Santiago, uh, Yonkers, and see my TED Talk and find all my social media handles. Beautiful, man. Thank you very much for being Yo, a guest on you, my bro. show, man. I appreciate it. It was a good time. I love Great the vibe. time. Great yeah. time. We got to do it again. You, yeah, yeah, You got yeah, so I'm much ready. to say, we got to definitely do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got I'm another done. hour in you. I, I, somewhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peace and love. Yo, thank you.